Welcome YouTubers and fellow reefers uh, to this video. I'm your host, Mr. Reef Buster. We're going to talk about a couple of different things today. Um, if you follow my channel, and it's been, you'll know that it's been two months since I put up a video. And partially because I haven't been um, here with the tank to do a maintenance, you know, proper maintenance on it and do video for you guys. I was away for two months, so that's partially um, the reason why I haven't been posting videos on this channel or giving you guys update about this 45 gallon tank of mine but now that i'm back uh you expect to see more videos so with that i'm gonna start this video today and since my last video it was about one month update uh with the sunperfuge gym on my tank and it's been three months so far and I believe the sump has gone through the cycle process and I'm starting to see some results. And I'll tell you why I'm starting to see results. And I know that the cycle period is over because the two months I wasn't here to take do proper maintenance on this tank on an everyday basis. It's not like I was gone the whole two months and nobody took care of this tank. It, it's not the case. I did, you know, I would come once every two weeks uh, to do weekly ma you know maintenance on this tank just not as much as I I used to do before and the reason I got away with doing that you know doing one maintenance once every two weeks or every three weeks the reason I got away with that because I have a sump refuge gym now if I didn't if I was still running cancer filter all my corals would be dead my livestock would be probably dead the tank would look disgusting probably but thanks to my sump refugium, I was, I was able to get away with the minimal maintenance on this tank for the past two months. And it's still thriving the way it is. So I do have to thank my sump refugium for that. So I know it's doing its job. Now, I'm going to show you guys my sump refugium in a little bit. You'll see what I mean by that. I mean... This tank, um, I did add some new corals right after I added the sump refugium, which was a mistake in my my part, and I did pay for that mistake. The toadstool coral in the center, the long tube anemone on the top right corner, and the torch coral on the bottom right, I added those along with the frog spun at the same time. Now, since then, I have lost the frog spun. And I, I'm guessing it was too early to add that kind of a coral into this tank. Now, the toadstool leather is doing fine. The long, in the long tentacle anemone, he's doing all right. And we'll talk about him a little bit. And the electric torch is doing good as well. I mean, he's got a second head coming out. So I'm, sure, I'm, I'm assuming he's happy with the water quality in my tank. And the problem I'm having is with my long tentacle anemone. Now, I'm not seeing as much growth as I would like to see from him. He's still the same size. Matter of fact, he seems a little bit smaller <laughs> since I got him. And he and he does tend to move around a lot. I mean, he goes to the back, to the front, to the top right where you see him. He moves around a lot. I mean, frequently on a daily basis, which is unusual. Um, if you guys have experience with long tentacle anemones, please leave a comment below. Let me know why. Uh, he's moving around so much and I'm not seeing growth. I do feed him shrimp, pieces of shrimp once a week. Maybe uh, let me know if I should feed him more than once a week, maybe twice a week. But other than that, most of my corals are doing good. The zinnias are doing good. You know, the zinnia colonies, I have two different colonies on two sides. And there's a lot of heads coming out of those. A lot more bigger, a lot of colonies there. So those are doing good. The, to the toaster leather is doing good as well. The mushrooms are doing okay my mushroom island i want to do over there not a mushroom island but those two rocks i want to populate with mushrooms so they're doing good uh, mushrooms will do good in most water uh, permanent unless you have really really disgusting water which is which most people don't but other than that the tank is doing uh doing really good considering i've neglected for the past two months so props for that to my tank <laughs> now i wish my zoanthid colony was doing but you know better i do i'm gonna be adding more zoanthids to this tank but 
enough of the coral talk. I mean, you can see right there, electric torch is doing good. I brought him down. He was up there more. I brought him down. He, I think he, it's better if he's toward, more toward near, near the sand. So what I want to show you guys right now is I'm going to show you guys my sump refugium section. And you'll see the growth I've had in my refugium section, and which is crazy. Uh, it's unbelievable, actually. So let's go down. Enough talking. Let's go down and take a look. Here we go. So, sorry about the blurriness. Um, I ha as you guys know, may or may not know, I'm running two uh, protein skimmers. One is the Bubble Magnus, and other is the Reef Octopus, which is a hang on the back. So Bubble Magnus is running on dry skimming. The Reef Octopus is on wet. And look at the Catomorpha in my refugium section. I got, when I first set up the sump, uh, sump I got a little ball of Cato. I ordered a little ball of Catomorpha. And this is what it looks like today, three months from since I added the Cato to this refugium. It has taken overgrown my refugium section to the point where I can't see <laughs> to the bottom of this of this refugium. So I'm gonna have to trim it down. And like I said, guys, catomorpha is is a very good way to export nutrients. And once I take cut a, cut you know trim the cato and take it out of the sump, you know I'm gonna see drastic change in my water perimeters. That means I'll lose. It's gonna get better. So. So I know the Kato is doing its work. The light is working properly. Um, let's get go back up. And so as you you know as you saw already, the sump is doing its job. And I'm gonna share with you guys my water perimeter. I did a water you know test of my water today. So I'll go over the readings that I got. Now my ammonia is at zero. And my pH was a little down. pH was a 7.4. And my nitrates are at in the low end of uh, 10 ppm. So I'm still working on my nitrates. It's still not zero. So we'll, um, hopefully I'm going to figure something out. Maybe I have to get a reactor or something to take care of this nitrate problem. Um, but everything else is good. Um, now I'm going to show you guys the readings I got. Um, from my henna checkers so the alkalinity as you can see is at 8.3 uh, calcium is at 541 which is on the high end which I'm not going to complain about and my magnesium is at uh, 1360 I believe 1360 ppm and you know it's not bad. It's okay water perimeter. Um, now, as far as livestock goes, I did add two new fishes to this tank. You, as you can see, the purple pseudo, he's a new addition to this tank. Uh, he's, uh, he's a very shy guy, shy little guy. Um, and he gets bullied a lot by my blue hippo. Blue Hippo, he, my tank really hates him. And doesn't hate him, it's just like to bully him around. And he kind of met, try to mess with my tank as well, and he'll get back at him. And I also added a new clownfish along with the Blue Pseudo. I got a Fire Ice uh, Clown. So that's the new type of clownfish, which is people are going crazy for. It's um, spots of white with orange and black. So I got him at a good price, so I decided to get him as well so i'm done with the livestock as far as fishes go um going forward i'm gonna be adding i'm gonna to start adding more cleanup crews and invertebrates on this tank because it's time for more cleanup crews on this tank um and eventually i'll add more corals but not right away i'm gonna wait a little bit longer before i want to add more corals mm, that's the xenia colony um Other than that, not much has been going on. I do want to talk to you guys about this new project that I've uh, been thinking about. Um, I've been thinking about doing. Um, I might be doing a doing a little nano tank, a side project. Uh, I recently came across. Well, I have. Little nano, very small, super nano <laughs> tank available that I might want to just do 
a zoanthid colony tank uh, where I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna grow zoanthids on it. So that's a that's a project I'm thinking about in the future. Um, so we'll talk about that in a future video when I start actually start going forward with it. But that's it, guys. You know, I just wanted to give you guys a quick, a quick heads up. And it's been two months, so I wanted to post a video and let you guys know what's going on with this tank. But do expect to see more videos, more frequent videos with my, with this 45 gallon. And not to mention, I'm gonna be probably doing a whole series on the nano tank i'm gonna be doing so at the tank i'm gonna be doing um i do appreciate you guys watching my video leave comments you know any suggestions you guys might have leave it in the comments below if you think if you like the video you know hit the thumbs up button subscribe to my channel because there will be a lot more videos coming out and i do appreciate you guys you know watching my channel watching the videos and leaving all these suggestions and comments and and I do appreciate that. So until next time, guys, peace out.